journey started long time back when we are working with Professor B.N. Chakravarti, who is an eminent reproductive specialist and one of the pioneers in the country. And at that time, we saw the great need of IVF, especially among the lower mid economic class who used to come to Sir's chamber from all over the country for hours and hours to get the treatment. From there, I had the dream of building a center with a low cost budget so that we can bring success to millions of people across the villages of India in order to achieve a family and give them smiling faces. Inequality is a major hurdle towards it. So far, morphological classification of the embryo was considered as the standard, but that was not really enough. So it gave way to the invention of PGT, which is basically invasive techniques to detect euploid embryos so that we can achieve a higher pregnancy rate at a lesser miscarriage rate. Well, since the inception of IVF way back in 1978, the challenges of IVF are growing, especially with the great need and the demands of the patients increasing. So there are really two aspects of giving them a success, not only success, but making the pregnancy stay and giving a healthy life born baby and thirdly reducing the cost of the treatment and lastly but the most important that you all know that not all of them will have a family or success in IVF but they should have the feeling that they have been cared for in their path of getting a success. That's all the, the main of the challenges in the case of a reproductive medicine specialist at the present moment. The advent of non-invasive chromosomal screening in the field of reproductive medicine has ushered in a new era of hope in, in differentiating between euploid and aneuploid embryos. As you all know, PGT was an invasive technique, involved costly equipments like laser, skilled personnel. The, on the other hand, NICS has bypassed this, all these issues and, we, and can be assessed by a uh, uh, accommodated by a large, larger population of patients without the need of his highly skillful persons or labs, etc. Well, NICS technology is a novel technique, but it is less, it is not invasive at all, and it can give a very good results with at par with PGD. In fact, I was motivated by the higher concordance rates between NICS and PGT. In fact, when all odds are eliminated, the concordance rates reaches around 86% as studied by Luby et al. in 2020. So this is one of the greatest achievements of NICS and I think that what exactly motivated me in accepting this method. Well, the idea came to me way back in 1999 when we attended the IFS meeting in China and I was listening to a lecture by one of the pioneers in this field on NICS. As I came back to India, I persuaded Mr. Dasnidhar of Lilac Insights that whether we can do something on that in our country so that this technique can be availed by millions of people who are undergoing IVF in our country at a lower cost. And with great expectations, he has made this process success and it is now available at the IVF centers and patients who can, who are really desirous can avail of this test in a non-invasive way so that they can choose between an euploid and an aneuploid embryo which can be given back to their uterus with a higher chance of normal healthy offsprings and a lesser chance of miscarriage. There are two aspects which I find most convincing. One is the non-invasive nature of the technique, which is one of the very important points. Number two is the concordance rate with PGT is very high, almost reaching 86% when all odds are eliminated. So these are the two aspects which really motivated me for NICS test of embryos.
because the whole procedure was explained and uh, demonstrated by Lilac people, the, the procedure and the sample collection became quite simple and so far we have no hassles uh, in collecting the samples or correct, uh, doing the procedure. The most important thing which should be borne in mind to prevent contamination and which usually comes from the lab personnel, the media itself. So that's why a cross-check method has to be always there and usually we send the spent media also for cross-checking as well as collect the blastosis in a fresh media so that that prevents contamination. Communication or counseling in, of IVF patients is the key, one of the key to success. Patients who have already had repeated miscarriages or failures or diseased baby in the families, they can appreciate easily the importance of pre-implantation genetic testing in cases of IVF. It will be a little bit difficult or it is difficult to communicate or to to motivate the patients who are undergoing first time IVF or ICSI treatment that genetic testing will increase their chance of pregnancy, will decrease their chance of miscarriage and will lead to a higher rate of healthy normal babies. So that's how we should convince our patients or counsel the patients in order to appreciate the value of pre-implantation genetic diagnosis in cases of IVF and ET. that NICS is a new game altogether in the field of reproductive medicine. It is, as I said to you earlier on, it is easy to persuade patients who had already had repeated failures or miscarriages or a diseased baby in their families to go to avail of the test facilities. But nowadays, we are recovering this test to everybody so that people are aware and get motivated. And maybe, may not be today, but maybe in years to come, they will choose the test you know, before they proceed for the actual treatment or in the part of the actual treatment of IVF and ICC. Why not all IVF procedures are successful? Well, basically there are three or four things to be taken into consideration. One is the quality of the eggs and the quantity of eggs. Both are equally important, but quality is more than quantity. And there the age of the patient, the antral follicle count, AMH level, previous history of IVF comes into play. Secondly is the sperm quality and the quantity. Both are equally important and which these two combine in giving a good quality embryo. As you all know, embryo is one of the key factors in achieving a higher success rate. And lastly, the most important thing is endometrial receptivity where we cannot guarantee that the endometrium is receptive or not. There have been tests developed to address this issue. And right now, people are working to bridge this gap that the fertilization rate is 90% and above, while the pregnancy rate is less than 50% or maybe in some cases 50% at the present moment. So these are the various factors. That is the egg quality, the sperm quality, leads to leading to embryo quality, as well as the endometrial receptivity, which are the key factors in achieving a success in IVF and ET. Well, you have asked me a very tricky question. This is one of the very tricky questions to answer. That whether one should go by the ads in the newspapers, the billboards, or go by the digital media in Google or Facebook, or rather survey or search the doctor's credentials and the credibility of the center as well as the pathway which the center has set and its success curve. These are all the things to be assessed by the patients before they choose a center. Otherwise they get lost and they get lost on their dreams and a lot of money is spent in useless issues. Since the birth of Louise Brown in 1978, the process of IVF has improved by leaps and bounds. There has been improvement in all aspects of IVF, namely in counseling and selection of patients, in selecting the drugs or individualized protocols for stimulation, 
in collecting eggs by ultrasound technique, lab conditions, specially equipments as well as culture media involvement, and embryo transfer ultra by ultrasound guidance, which is the rule of today. And lastly, the other techniques which are coming to play to as to select the, the employed embryos so that we can achieve a higher success rate and a lower miscarriage rate that is PGT and more recently NICS which has got a wide ray of hope in future in obtaining a better success rate. Well, the idea came to me way back in 1999 when we attended the IFS meeting in China and I was listening to a lecture by one of the pioneers in this field on NICS. As I came back to India, I persuaded Mr. Dasidhar of Lilac Insights that whether we can do something on that in our country so that this technique can be availed by millions of people who are undergoing IVF in our country at a lower cost. And with great expectations, he has made this process success and it is now available at the IVF centers and patients who, can, who are really desirous can avail of this test in a non-invasive way so that they can choose between an euploid and an aneuploid embryo which can be given back to their uterus with a higher chance of normal healthy offsprings and a lesser chance of miscarriage. Mm -hmm.